Ryder Lee, who's the CEO of the Saskatchewan Cattlemen's Association. And I thought he'll be at this show, Canada's Farm Show, so we track him down. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you too, John. Good. It's always nice. This is about the time you get more people around and a little bit more action here. Well, it was neat. We were just meeting with a group of uh, farmers from Mongolia talking about the cattle business, and they're looking to import some genetics and, and get their beef industry looking maybe a little bit more like, like ours where you're eating that youthful, tasty animal. Mongolia? Yeah. Gosh, you know, I've seen a few of the delegations around and uh, lots of international experience of these things. So tell me about this labeling. So certain cuts of meat, like prepared meat cuts, um, are not going to have the sticker on them, but ground beef will. Why ground beef? Your guess is as good as mine, John. I think, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, say, a, a brisket. If you ever bought one of those, there's a bit, a bit of trimming to do there. Yeah. Uh, you know, your fat content is going to be quite high, but you don't eat it that way right. it's it's trim or you know even with your burger often you'll cook and drain yeah so the label being based on the raw product a we think that's a that's confusing um but more importantly you know this whole journey started around our our what's the opposite of a deficit we're eating too many calories and often empty calories right. ultra processed foods really is is what we're seeing empty calories and aiming at sodium sugar and fat in some of those you know middle of the grocery store foods makes sense but putting a warning on something like ground beef is almost warning people against home cooking well and even with ground beef years ago the industry started labeling lean uh, extra lean i mean and this was a movement to say even in the ground form i wanted less fat and then of course you're going to pour less fat off but you know if it's not lean you're going to have more fat to pour off so right. so when these health groups campaign like the diabetes group heart and stroke surely they're talking about other types of food than natural beef 100 percent and some of those articles you were mentioning there's quotes in there where they're saying yeah this has to aim at the ultra processed stuff they're not saying oh yeah you're right on track with with ground beef too you know we're diabetes diets support meat a lot it's it's and and it's the whole story of what are you getting with your calories and with beef it's protein zinc iron vitamin b12 iron and b12 are deficiency problems in in good chunks of Canadian society. So how do you get that that's not a supplement? Steak, get it from burger, beef. Taco yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Ryder Lee is with a CEO of Saskatchewan Cattlemen's Association. So I, I don't want to play pity party because the one thing about your industry is even when you're under siege, you don't tend to play victim much, which is good. But you look at the constellation of events. <laughs> And you and I have talked about this. You look at what goes on in the grasslands. You look at uh, ecologically the importance of the industry. But there are people who do not like the cattle industry. So how do you see this? I mean, is this is there something more at work here to get people to stay away from beef? Well, you know, we can conspiracy theory cook all day long. And I think enough of that's gone on in the world the last few years. We need to deal with what's on the table. And, and at the same time, you know, we've, I think, over the years put our environmental message front and center, especially in Ottawa, but here in Regina, and I'd say capital cities everywhere we go, to make sure that people do know that it's grazing that renews the grasslands. We don't want wide open prairie fires and we don't have buffalo roaming the lands, but it still needs renewal, and that's, that's grazing that does that now in a way that doesn't destroy everything else that we've built up here just leading with that you know where the deer and the antelope play cattle country where do the birds nest cattle country and and there's not it's funny we take it for granted because you and i drive around this province we can see that right there's lots of people in the world that don't get that opportunity when i lived in ottawa there's people that had never been outside of ottawa well then all you know is what you hear, and, and it doesn't take much to convince you. So we have to show up with, with our story, and we continue to do that. That's why the Cattlemen's Association is here and, and others like us. 
Ryder Lee, CEO of Saskatchewan Cattlemen's Association. So this Ottawa labeling, uh, the food scientists we talked with said uh, they had an issue with a lot of the exceptions because, of course, you know, we know dairy products, uh, again, are, are high in healthy fats and it's part of a good diet. So are meat products. So, so you've got the exclusions, you've got the idea of the daily value, you know, over 15 percent, you know, is it really determinative? So you can find all sorts of things to talk about. Is the industry going to be able to stop Ottawa from this, or is Health Canada is the die cast? Well, that's that's the the big question, and we're we're pushing hard on this. You know, a lot of the work we do, you don't see it in the media, uh, you don't see it publicly because we meet with decision makers one on one in their offices. But this is a different one. It's a full court press we have. Don't label my beef.ca out there that people can go to sign up and and fire off some some letters to their MPs and MLAs and, and others like that because they do respond to that. You know, you you were in the business. It's it's your voters showing up and, and being heard that help and and we've heard some some positive things, but everything's a no until it's a yes or or vice versa so we gotta we gotta go right to the very end industry in general uh we've had challenges obviously just as grain did the last couple of years with drought you had feed challenges what is the if you look at the saskatchewan surveillance today size of the herd the the health of the industry what do you see well, the drought's not over, even though it's rained. You know, we we emptied the cupboards to get through the last three, four, five years in, in some places. So there's there's recovery that's needed there, and, and that comes in the form of a lot of rain um, and, and some good sunshine and and piling up a few years of that. And and meanwhile, we're our, our herd's going to shrink. From here to Mexico, there's a drought, Mm. and there's a lot of cows going to town, so the herd is going to shrink. At the same time, global demand for protein just keeps on running. Like the the price of beef in the store is is noticeable, but people keep buying it because it's fantastic, and and they they recognize it versus the alternatives. It's it's what they prefer to spend on. So the the opportunities there, that's fantastic. but you got to be there. And the other part that, that pressures us is the price of everything is up, whether it's uh, our inputs, but also canola, wheat, all the things you can grow on an annual crop. It's really pressuring people to, are they, are they going to keep the cattle or are they going to go into grain farming? So we've got to be able to compete there. So we need to see more of that consumer dollar making it all the way through the producer chain to keep cows having calves. Is the packing, the, the slaughter packing capacity, is that something that starts to move out now from the very large consolidated? I mean, we have fewer and fewer of the packing facilities. Is it now starting to look more localized or the potential? There, there's local ventures taking off, but the math of it is it's still not highly impactive. Right. You know, you're, you're talking about, oh, a week, let's add a 700 head a week plant in this neighborhood that's great that's not four thousand a day so it's it's going to impact those producers that can be part of that value chain and that's fantastic but it's tough we've we've gotten to that big packing plant model for a lot of small decisions over a lot of time whether it's um what can we export that we don't eat in canada and you can get together a big enough volume in a big plant to be able to sell that to a marketplace versus a small plant. Well, you can't really sell that, so it's a cost. So there's all kinds of these things that make it make it make sense in context why we got to where we got and, and unraveling from that is, is difficult. And economies of scale I guess that's been the whole Huge. story anyway right? As economies move scale becomes more important. Well and have you heard anybody talk about having trouble finding labor lately? True. It's everything and everywhere and, and no different if you're thinking about well I've got the packing plant idea well who's going to work in it? I've got farmers and ranchers that'll, if, if you're getting tired of being on the radio, you can have a job. They'd take anybody right <laughs> uh, now. Yeah. 
their, their choice level must be pretty low if they're looking at me. I'm in, man. <laughs> Ryder Lee, CEO of Saskatchewan Cattlemen's Association. Well, I'm glad that you're uh, here at Canada's Farm Show. Of course, uh, I expected you would be. Always good seeing you, and uh, thanks for dropping in. 